What could be next? You know, everybody has some kind of prejudices. I thought I was getting good information, but I would see people being portrayed in a negative way, mostly like minorities. Black crime, bad incidences. It started reinforcing negative stereotypes. I had the TV on, it was C-SPAN. This black woman was on talking, and I started watching her. I decided I was gonna ask her for some advice. Um, I'm a white male and I am prejudiced. I thought, oh boy, what kind of racist rant is coming at me now? But I also thought, I'm so glad that he's just admitting it. Like now we can talk. What can I do to change, you know, to be a better American? When he said that, I felt called help him. Thank you so much for being honest um, and for opening up this conversation because it's simply one of the most important ones we have to have in this country. So what can you do? Get to know black families. Turn off the news at night. Read about the history of the African-American community in this country. Foster conversation in your family and in your neighborhood. When I gave Gary those ideas off the top of my head, I didn't think he was going to follow them. I'm a disabled veteran. I live in an isolated place in the South. Segregation was almost yesterday. I struggle with prejudice and racism. Everything she suggested sounded easy, but I don't know if she realized that it's very difficult. My first conversation following Heather's advice was uncomfortable. My nervousness showed through. The poor fellow didn't know where I was coming from or why I was bothering them. But it was a, an experience. It was a learning process. I went into African American Studies section at the bookstore, and I opened a few books. And I made a little stack. I went to the counter. I said, I'm working on not being prejudiced. So we're right where? We're right where? Eagle Street. Right in this corner here? Yeah. That's an amazing looking building, man. It, it, was it something else before? It was. Used to be the little club there. We used to call it that. A Redwood. I live here and I did not know that. Now, I'm doing my own thinking for myself. It's nice to have this new knowledge, this new start. Look yourself, hey, though. Gary. Oh. Yeah. This is so great. <laughs> it's good to see you, buddy. Yeah. Um, all right, here's my present for you. Right. Ready? Okay, so this one um, is actually all about white people. Okay. <laughs> I fit in here. <laughs> it's uh, everyday white people confront racial and social injustice. So I knew you'd pick something. <laughs> <laughs> I can legitimately call Gary a friend now, and that is the last thing I thought would happen. Like, you know, don't need to I believe that to be a better American, as Gary said, it actually takes getting out there and knowing people who are different than you. I feel like I wasted a lot of life. Think of all the people that could have been added to it or how I could have been enriched a little bit. I'm not proud, but I'm not gonna be ashamed because I'm working on being different. Getting to know Gary on his walk has taught me a lot about who we are as humans and our capacity to change. It's given me a lot of hope. We've all got to do a little bit of what Gary is doing. Take some steps. Do something to get out of your comfort zone. Keep up the good work. And to get to know people who are different. I'd like to hope that in the story of the unlikely friendship between the black woman on TV and the racist caller, that there's something for all Americans to have a little hope. 
there is something that connects us beyond our differences. It's difficult to step out. You're gonna have setbacks. But in the end, you're gonna be a stronger person for conflict resolution. You're gonna be a stronger person for tolerance. You get all that just from shaking somebody's hand. Now you're a friend. You're a friend. Yeah. All right, man. Okay, man. All right, thanks.